Hello everybody, welcome again to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I am in Mombasa and to be specific, I'm at the Ugandan festival and culture right here on the Kenyan soil. It is all happening in Mombasa the other day or rather the past week. They were in Diani, that is on the south coast, they have been on the north coast and the whole thing is ending right here at the Fort Jesus. So. If you go to that direction, you are going to go all the way to the uh, to the old town, and the whole event is happening at uh, that is the Fort Jesus. Actually, you can see from the banner here, can see me and can see me is going to be in attendance, and also some other comedians, all the culture, you know, people who deal with culture in Uganda. So this is just a way of promoting Ugandan culture in Kenya because I know. Many Ugandans do come to Kenya, many Kenyans we go to Uganda and uh, it is a good thing we have to interchange ideas and all that. So what I want us to do, let us go inside just to see how the whole thing is happening as we wait for Ankan Sime and the rest, okay? As we proceed into this event, this is how the place is looking today. I really want to get inside just to know or rather just to see how the festival is going to go down remember that for jesus it's under the unesco world heritage site this is what i've been talking about it's a way of promoting their culture i just hope we got some foods around this area and we're going to have a test of the whole thing so this is the entry. This is how the entry looks like to for Jesus. And it's starting today. You can even see many and many people are getting inside for the event. So we need to go inside the for Jesus and enjoy the whole thing. What I'm so excited about is just to to meet consumer. People do say that some people who do say I do resemble an consumer of Uganda. I do not know about that. Okay, so I just met a gentleman from Uganda and uh, is this your first time to be in Kenya? No, no, I've been to Kenya before, but it's my first time to be in Fort Jesus. At Fort Jesus. Okay, how do you find it? Incredible. How do you find Mombasa? Beautiful place. Yeah. A lot of history. A lot of history, yeah. I really hope that um, mm -hmm. Africa can come here and develop the curriculum of teaching history wow. in our schools. That is nice. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. If I may ask, you know, you just came in when the weather when the weather it's a bit calm. Have you ever been here when it's too hot? I've never been to Mombasa before. This is my first ah, time. This is your first time. And I find this already too hot. <laughs> You find this too hot? Yeah. Remind me your name, please. My name is Ruanjezi, Dr. Ruanjezi uh, Steven. Okay, so you came for the festival? I'm actually the one leading the dancers. Oh! Yes. Okay, so what do we expect from it? No, you, you are going to see the entire Uganda uh -huh. brought together to in the same show. Oh, yes. so we do expect a lot. How I about the food? Because we got the grasshoppers, I, I wish I would well, have I some time to enjoy. The grasshoppers will be there because <laughs> normally they are seasonal. They uh -huh. are supposed to come in November. Uh -huh. But um, you'll have a Uganda has a big variety of food. It has a lot. So for now, I just keep my appetite keep high. Your appetite. I don't want to give off too much. Uh -huh. Keep your appetite for the food. Keep uh -huh. your appetite for Nere dancing. Wow, Nere troop dancing. Wow, I'll be right there. I am waiting for you. What's your name? Pamela, Pamela. of Pafandi Media. another brother from another mother all the way from Kampala Uganda and what I want him to tell us it's his name and uh, the reason why he's here in Kenya specifically Mombasa uh, well my name is Andrew Kagwa Maiga an arts and culture journalist from Uganda yeah and uh, I'm here for the Uganda festival mm -hmm. which, which has been going on in different uh, regions of uh, the coastal 
region. Oh, the coastal region, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so today is the final day and it's happening at uh, Fort Jesus. Yeah. yeah. I saw you were in uh, Diani, yes, Diani we, Reef. We That's Diani. on the southern coast. Yes, then uh -huh. we went to Malindi. Yeah. Uh, then after that we went to, uh, there, there is that... Uh, Vipingo. Yeah, Vipingo. Yeah. And uh, today we're here. Okay, is this your first time to be in Kenya? No, no, I've been to Nairobi. But not to Mombasa, not to, Mombasa. to Mombasa. Tell me of uh, your experience in Mombasa. Um, when I made tea with salt water and I had no idea it was You had salt. no? <laughs> so uh, I made tea, tried uh -huh. to put sugar in. Mm -hmm. Actually it was milk tea and then like it separated like you know what water yeah. uh -huh. so does to, to milk. So so so, so you, so. you felt uh, there's sugar, there's salt and yes. you're like what's going on? Yes. Uh -huh. So so I had to ask someone what, what the hell is going on? <laughs> you, you're not supposed to use tap water. The tap water. Yeah. Ah okay. So uh, tell me why Okay, tell us more about the Uganda festival that is happening inside here. Yeah? Well, the festival is about uh, eliminating competition. You know how African countries usually compete yeah. for tourists? Mm -hmm. So this is about complementing each other. Ah. Like Mombasa has some of the best beaches. Yes. And then Kampala has the wildlife and everything. Mm -hmm. So we can work together. Yeah. They come here for this and uh -huh. then they come to Uganda for something else that uh -huh. is not here. Okay. That's that's basically what the festival is about. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh, what do I expect? Because uh, I know it's about to start. Yes, uh, uh -huh. one one of the best, no not even one, the best dance troops you will ever find from East Africa. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm even very, very proud when I'm saying that and I'm wow. arrogant about it. Okay. The same way Kenyans can be arrogant about their <laughs> <laughs> You're proud about it? I'm proud. Like, they are the best troop you'll ever find, Dere Troop. Uh, they'll be dancing and singing later today. But Uganda's best comedy export and consume will also be performing. Will also be in the house. Yes. I can't wait to meet her. Ah, she's amazing. She's, she's amazing. amazing. Yeah. So we expect a lot. How about lot, the food? A lot. Yeah, there is the food, like uh, the Ugandan cuisine. Yeah. Have, have you been to Uganda, right? Yes, once. Uh, so you've eaten matoke. Like, yes. I know matoke is different. Matoke, ground nuts. Yes. Yeah. So much of it is here. Uh, then there is the steamed meat yeah. in uh, banana leaves. Uh -huh. That that will also be on the menu. Like oh. the, the, there's a lot of food. I think most people are even excited more about the food than the performances. Because of the, the grasshoppers. Like, uh, but I'm told it's seasonal. <laughs> the grasshoppers are seasonal. Wait, you've eaten grasshoppers? No, I haven't. Why? I haven't had an opportunity. The last so, time I was there, it was just a brief time. But I don't know. So, so wait, uh, you came to Uganda to do what? Okay. That's a good one. Okay, the reason why I came to Uganda, it's um, I wanted to start some business, the clothes business. That okay. is where I was there okay. for about two or three days. So I didn't have enough time just to go where it is being sold. Uh, but right now, I'm so ready for it. You, you should even come for Nyege Nyege. You heard of Nyege Nyege? Yes, uh, Nyege Nyege Festival. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> You should come for I that should. one as well. When yeah. is it? Uh, it usually happens in September. In September? Yeah. So it's just a few months to yeah, September? Yeah, you, you need to plan right now because mm -hmm. uh, uh, Nyege Nyege is for big spending. Oh, Nyege Nyege for big spending. Yes. But when you are there, you know, all will be <laughs> slightly better. Yeah, and, and you see, uh, the, the many times I've gone to Nyege Nyege and I even forget the tent I, I, I booked. Serious? Yeah. <laughs> Because the party don't stop. It doesn't stop. Yes. <laughs> Our comedian Eric Mondi usually comes to that festival. I know. I, I usually see him around, and you ah. see, we, we have this thing mm -hmm. that when you are nyege nyege and you call your friends and they don't pick up, mm -hmm. it probably means they are swimming. So do not look for them. Uh -huh. Just go on with life. Uh -huh. If your battery dies, yeah. just go on with life. People will look for you using yeah, your yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll walk uh, to your if, house. <laughs> if your phone falls in water, uh -huh. just move on. Because just our move forefathers on. moved on with life without phones. Ah, yeah. okay.
So this is what I'm talking about. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. What is your name? My name is Namugiru Rita. I'm sorry because the lighting is not that good, but at least we can see what you're having. So tell me, what is this? These are laptop bags. These are laptop bags? Okay, they're made from? Made out of cowhide. Cowhide? Yes. Ah. Okay, so how do you do, do it? How long does it last? It's, it, it should be very strong. It is very durable. Ah. Okay, so you're selling this one or you are giving it out? Yes, I'm selling everything here. Okay, is it possible for you to open yes. a little bit? You just want to see how the inside looks like a little bit. Sorry guys, it's getting a bit dark. Oh, it's not that very clear, but at least... Ah, there's sponge here. Ah, there's sponge somewhere here. Okay, so you're selling this one? Yes. Is it part of uh, the traditional... Thing to carry or just uh, something that you people came up with recently? Uh, we came up with, with this mm -hmm. uh, because in this era, yeah. almost everyone has a laptop. Oh yeah, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So we we are trying to make local um, items. Yeah, yeah. Things that we know that people need uh -huh. use every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, local. Like for me, I think I need one. You can see at the back. Look at my watch. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't manufacture watches in Uganda. No, no, no. Like no. The, the strap is ah. out of the same material. Ah, okay. Yeah. It looks nice. And then, what is this? Uh, this is called um, a dungu. A dungu. Yes. I think I've heard about it. It's uh, a musical instrument. It's a, it's a musical instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, in English, it's called a hub. An, an hub. Ah, yes. okay. And tonight, you'll be, it will be played. Okay. It's part of the instrument. Is it the same? Are they still the same? They're different. Okay. Yeah, they're different. Uh -huh. this, is, uh, this is number one, this is number six, this is number four. Okay. Yeah, they give the same, they're different. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. okay. And over here we have uh, the ladies' passes. Ah. Still have, uh, made out of uh, the same cowhide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah. Different colors depending on the... And it should be very durable. Yeah, very. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then we've got some sandals here for the... No, this is a souvenir, a key holder. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> a key holder. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. In the shape of a sandal. Ah, yes. okay. Now over here we have a, 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 a thermal flask. Wow. Photo uh -huh. Yeah. We just cover the, the outside part with the bamboo, with local bamboo. Oh, so the outside it's bamboo? Yes. Wow. It's bamboo with our logo. Ndere. Ah, Ndere. Yeah. Okay. That's the name of the troop. Ah. Do you know what Ndere means? No. A flute. Ah, a flute. Yes. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I think I know. Yeah, we do have it. A flute in every culture. Ah. So we have a flute too. Uh -huh. So over here we have the Ndere t shirts. Mm -hmm. Ndere yeah. t shirts, okay. Let me just buy it from the open. Oh, just the normal the material and all that. Okay. Then we have leather belts. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And then we have wooden belts. Wooden belts. Yes. Okay, I can see it looks different, it looks like. Yeah. This is a belt. Wow. What have you used inside to connect it together? Um, they are plastic. Ah, uh, uh, a very... Uh -huh. to separate the, the strips of wood. Ah, uh, it should be a strong one. Yeah, very strong. Okay. Uh, the leather hips. Mm. Wow. <laughs> you look good in it. Thank you. Uh -huh. Then over here, mm. we have uh, these are videos. Yeah. Which can as well uh, be used as a uh, key holder. A key holder. Yes. Ah. This is a video. It's a flash. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, the, the dancers that we are going to showcase tonight. Mm -hmm. And over here. Mm -hmm. Are the audios with only the music ah. which we are going to play on stage tonight. Oh, yeah. All okay. these are products of Ndere Troop. Oh, so this is the Ndere Troop. Exactly. Okay, then I should be able to capture the what they say. So what was your name again? Namuhilu Rita. Namuhilu. Namuhilu. Wow, okay. <laughs> Come to Canada, I'll teach you how to speak the language. I do, eh? 
All right, let me just capture a little bit of this.
is finished. <laughs> However, to be called democratic, you must have a lot of political parties. And Buganda has the biggest number of political parties I've ever known 
56. But we don't call them parties, we call them clans. And this is how the democracy works, the very original democracy. That all the people of Buganda, who are called Baganda, follow the clans of their fathers, except the king who takes the clan of the mother. That's the only place in the whole world where mothers give identity to the head of state. Give a big round of applause to the ladies. No, ladies, don't clap. Ladies, just do this. And only three articles in our constitution summarize everything I have said. All the relations I've been explaining are in three articles. Article 1 says, Article 2 and Article 3. Did you get the difference? Yes. Uh, don't worry, we can translate into English. Division of labor and specialization, which are critical for economic emancipation. One. Yeah. What did you say? What did you say? <laughs> first, first, first apologize to the constitution. <laughs> he, was, he was reading the wrong way. Okay. Now, ask one goes. Everybody. And so have our two banana plantations. In Uganda, the most important crop is the banana. And whether you are going out or coming into power, you will have to continue bringing the bananas because we are all relatives of the king. The king cannot go hungry. The palace cannot go hungry. The kingdom cannot go hungry because everybody keeps contributing their bananas. At Koto says, everybody, the Zat are the ones that saved us from famine. Yeah, because we are all getting all the food, you can't go hungry. And finally, because we are all very well fed and happy, Article 3 gives us how we should behave when we are all satisfied. Say it. Everybody. Like a let me put myself upside down. You may have a look. <laughs> no one will take a picture to embarrass you in the tabloid. Everyone supports you. They keep the secrets of the kingdom. That's the democracy that started in Buganda. I told you, you can't find it anywhere else. The second thing that started in Buganda is science. This is the very first scanner in the whole world. And if I shake it near you, I can tell you everything about your life. Who said ah? Uh, who said ah? Uh, I come? Excuse me? You dare me? Do you know who you are? Provoking? No! I come. You people, I can come over there. And you will have serious problems. Hey! Are you still sure I come? Okay. Ah. So don't worry. <laughs> no, something is pulling me in this direction. <laughs> I already know a lot of things about you. Seriously? Yeah. What's your name? Monica. Exactly. 
<laughs> you see how good I am? I just found out the name with my scanner. I tell you, this scanner is so accurate that even when a woman is pregnant, I can tell you whether the baby is a boy or a girl. Who said, huh? Anyone pregnant? And I give you free gynecological services right now. <laughs> or is there anyone responsible for a pregnancy? <laughs> you don't want to confess? We are coming to scan you. Take the scanner. Take the scanner right now. Hey! Take this one. And make sure you go to the other corner, they have capacity. Hey! Hey! Have you positioned the scanners? Okay. Now, if the scan is in front of you, please pick and shake it. Shake, 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 shake. Shake, 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 shake. Uh -huh. All those who are shaking, your data is already in the central processing unit. <laughs> Now, because I don't have enough scanners to go around, and yet I want to scan everybody, I'm going to sing a song, and as I sing, you shake, give to the neighbor, the neighbor shakes, keep it going. When it reaches a person that is either pregnant or responsible for a pregnancy, the song will automatically stop. <laughs> And then I will tell you whether the children are boys or girls. Check it again. Check, 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 check. Now pass it on. No one can hear. No, continue, continue. Keep it going. Next, next. Pass it on. Pass it on. If you have it, you know the reason. If you are a lady, you are correctly pregnant. And don't you say me, I am very old, because miracles are still possible. And if you are a man, you know what you did. Results. These are the results. The children will come out very, very strong wow. and healthy. Wow, say that again. And they will be either boys or girls. Or girls. Welcome to Uganda. <laughs> Everything is possible in Uganda. <laughs> now, the other thing that started in Uganda, you are going to prove everything started in Uganda. The other thing that started in Uganda is relaxation. Uganda is the most relaxed country in the whole world. Wow. That is why we don't owe any money to the World Bank. Okay. Yes, so we have no World Bank debts. And yet at one time we were the most indebted, now we have no money to pay because of our ability to relax. This is how we got off the World Bank debt list. 1993, the president of the World Bank came to Uganda because Uganda was highly netted and they wanted to see if there was something they could sell to pay World Bank money. His name was Wolfenson. I saw him, I danced for him. He came to Uganda in a hurry and as soon as he got there, he asked, do you have a market? We told him, of course, we have a big market in Kampala, Owino. Wolfenson went to Owino expecting to find stock exchange. And he was shocked to find sweet potatoes and bananas and tomatoes. <laughs> and a lot of people, everyone moving but going nowhere, everyone talking without anyone listening. Yes. And Wolfenson said, what do I do in this market now? He said, let me buy a souvenir and take it to Washington to explain the type of markets in Uganda. There was a Uganda woman selling two bunches of bananas and Wolfenson said, how much is one? The woman was about, say, 10,000, but when she looked at the skin, the price went up. 
And she said, 20,000. Wolfram said, okay, here is 40,000, give me both, both branches. The Uganda woman said, no. Wolfenson said, why? The woman said, if you take both of them today, what shall I do tomorrow? <laughs> you take one and I have something to keep me busy. Wolfenson had never seen this type of economics. He left the window, went to Lake Victoria to find fishermen. A Ugandan fisherman was lying under a tree 10 o'clock in the morning with torn clothes and Wolfenson looked at him and said, hi man, what's up? The Ugandan looked at Wolfenson and said, the sky. <laughs> and Wolfenson said, what do you do every day? The Ugandan said, I'm a fisherman, can't you see I'm near the lake? Wolfenson said, then go out and catch fish, what are you doing here? The Ugandan said, I fished yesterday. <laughs> and how many fish did you catch? Three. What did you do with those three fish? We ate one at home. I gave one to my neighbor. We shall eat the last one tonight. I'll go back to the lake tomorrow. Simple economics in Uganda, we go when the things are finished. <laughs> <laughs> and Wolfenson said, okay, now that you have the fish for tonight, you go out and catch more fish. The Ugandan said, why kill the fish in advance? <laughs> I don't need it yet. Let the poor creatures have an extra day of life. <laughs> After all, my grandfather was a fisherman. My father was a fisherman. I am a fisherman. My son will be a fisherman. The lake has fixed the boundaries. The fish cannot escape to a forest. <laughs> Anytime I go, I pick what I need. Wolfenson said, no, 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 no. You go catch the fish and sell it. They got and said, and then, you get money by fishing later and catch more fish. The Ghanan said, and then, sell the fish, buy a motorized boat. And then, come on, use the boat to catch a lot more fish. And then, <laughs> when you get that much fish, sell it and again, you will get a lot of money. And then? and then, when you get a lot of money, you become very rich. And then? And then, when you become very rich, you will relax. And then? They gone and looked at Wolfenson from the bottom to the top and said, What do you think I'm doing now? <laughs> <laughs> I am here already relaxing. Why should I suffer? If I'm going to come back to what I have already achieved. Wolfenson went back to Washington, said, ladies and gentlemen, forget, Ugandans will never pay. They are not even aware that we owe, they owe us money. <laughs> so Uganda is very relaxed. And if you come there, you'll find us walking like... <laughs> That's because we are relaxed. When you are stressed, these are tight. <laughs> and you walk. <laughs> so, the next dance, my dear friends, is going to help you to learn how to relax. That next time you feel stressed, shake your sitting facilities. <laughs> and the demonstration is in this dance called Nankasa, Bachi Simba, and Mwogola. <laughs>
flute in most of our languages is called Ndere. And this group is called Ndere Troop, which means we name ourselves after the flute. Partly because it has fantastic music. You know, if you blow the flute, if you're feeling very sad, you'll be cheering up shortly. If you want to fall in love and no one is paying attention, just go to their window and blow the flute, they will come out of the window. <laughs> if you are feeling stressed, blow the flute, you'll calm down. But most importantly, the flute is the, the only musical instrument that is found all over the world. In every culture of the world, there is a flute, meaning that all of us are equally human. So, in Ndere, we emphasize what unites people, not what divides us. So I'm glad to blow the instrument that is like the blood which flows in all our bodies, irrespective of our external differences. person on planet earth. Thank you. The most the, what I'm going to say, Your Excellency, if it causes you diplomatic problems tomorrow, I will be going. <laughs> I leave it to you, so it out. Now, the most beautiful women on planet earth come from southwestern Uganda. I can see the problems I'm tackling now. Because those ladies are so beautiful so that if she puts her foot in a tank of water, when she removes the foot, the water becomes milk. Uh, uh. However, 
However, don't worry, none of them has ever won a beauty competition. <laughs> because people who judge beauty in cities don't know our traditional way of judging the most beautiful people. For us, when we are judging beauty, traditionally, you begin by looking at the transport. <laughs> the legs must be four-wheel drive. Big, round, and plump. As big and as round as a banana plant. That is tick number one. You say, oh, I'm a guru who gave me two bad. But the women who go for beauty competition are always walking on two long things. <laughs> and they have a style of walking they call catwalk. To do catwalk, you must have high heeled shoes. The women from southwestern Uganda can't use those high heeled shoes because either the stiletto would break or sink into the ground. Then they get a small handbag and they start walking like. Mm. <laughs> if you have your full size of legs, can you cross them like this and they are great? That's how my sisters get disqualified. Because they have full volume, they walk to whom it may concern. <laughs> hey. And after looking at the transport, then look at the... You know what I'm talking about? A woman that drank milk of a real cow, the sitting facilities are boom! So big, so that when she's walking, they are not on her, they are following her. <laughs> that is where they get the second reason for disqualification. Because in the beauty contest, you must wear a swimming costume. The people who make swimming suits, no one has made the right size for my sisters, and they cannot stuff all their things in that little thing that they <laughs> Then you look at her waist, it would be as tiny as that of a wasp. Are you drawing the picture? Yeah. Legs what? Sitting for sitting, boom. Waists. <laughs> the belly is as flat as a glass door. That gives you very good opportunity to observe the dairy corporation. <laughs> which is always counting a quarter past. <laughs> Actually, when they are young, it's counting noon. When they grow up and breastfeed, a quarter past. That's where it stops. It can never become a half past. <laughs> Her neck is long, carrying a crest of hair. And when she walks, if you look at her for a long time, you feel dizzy. That's the beauty I'm talking about. Now let's go to Eastern Uganda. At the border with Kenya, there is a mountain that is wrongly these days called Mount Elgon. That's a wrong name. The traditional name is Masaba. Masaba, the people on that, around that mountain are called the Bar Masaba. And there, you do not become a man simply because you have been on earth for a long time. You must graduate. And I'm not talking about graduating from the university. I'm talking about standing in public. And someone will bring a raw knife and yip. <laughs> if they hit and you eye, you are not a man. You must stand and jump and you remain there. Then you graduate and qualify to do things. So now, let's see the boys in Mbali, Eastern Uganda, in that region we call Bugisu, going for the graduation ceremony. Bugisu!
As long as you don't do what they were do doing to there on the stage with me. Oh, this is 2024. Eh? Uh -huh. This is done only during the evening years. Chef, bring me a knife. Ah, boss, boss. <laughs> okay, boss. We sort it out at home. Okay, okay. at home. <laughs> no, no, not in Mombasa. No, 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 no. Come on, guide us in a more civilized way. <laughs>
for him. Going for a hug. Going for a hug and what? I love you. Thank you very much, Daphne Nasuna. gave us a great entertainment troupe 
uh, that give us really great entertainment and we have the minister here, we really appreciate. Clearly you're sending a message, we have to come to Titan next time. Uh, thank you very much, Maurice. Uh, should I speak Uganda, English, Kiswahili? Kiswahili? Ah, oh, okay. I'm Jambo. Atu Jambo. Uganda, I'm Jambo. Uh, now you hear the Ugandans are not responding. And I don't want to, to, to speak a language that they don't understand. So for that reason, allow me to speak English. Oh, yeah. Although you all know I speak very fluent Swahili. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Muhammad Osman, the County Executive Committee member, uh, in charge of tourism and culture. Honorable Gertrude, the County Executive Committee member from Taita Tabeta. Uh, Mr. Jamal, who is the chairman of the chamber of Mombasa, the chamber of colors of Mombasa. The, the, <laughs> Fatma, yes, Fatma, who is also from the chamber. And then we have the vice chancellor of Mombasa University. We have the the advisor, the chief advisor to the governor of Mombasa. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. People came up with that expression to save us from really making protocol blunders. So they always say all protocol observed. I wish to welcome you to Uganda this evening. As Mr. Rajesi said at the beginning, uh, we, we, we don't want to cause a diplomatic incident, but please allow us, lend us this space here, and we call it Uganda for purposes of this evening. I always tell visitors who come to the consulate's offices in Inyari that even if the Kenyan government wanted to, they cannot enter those premises to arrest a Kenyan there. Of course, this is not to say that we encourage Kenyans to break the law <laughs> and then run to Uganda uh, at the Uganda consulate. So I wish to thank you, 001, Hi. Hi. for Good. turning up in the You're numbers. Okay. Enjoy it. Uganda at uh, the Kenyan I consulate. Not yet, we started with the festival in Ibiani yeah, on Wednesday. <laughs> on Thursday, we were in Marindi. Yesterday and <clears throat> the part of today, we were in Vipingo. And here we are. Of course, we saved the best for last. So it's not that we really <laughs> underlook or undervalue under Mombasa, that is because. We know that Mombasa has been our biggest supporter in all our events. And you know, for many Ugandans, when they are coming to the Kenya coast, for them Mombasa is synonymous with the Kenya coast. Even when they are going to Diyan, it's only me who has really struggled of late to educate them that when they are in Diyan, they are not in Mombasa. That when they are in Kilifi, Marindi, and Watam, they are not in Mombasa. And for them, wherever they are at the Kenya coast, they are in Mombasa. The purpose of this festival was to bring you the Ugandan culture, which you have enjoyed this evening, to bring you the Ugandan cuisine, which you are still enjoying, to bring you the Ugandan tourism products, which we have showcased here, and to bring you some of our artists led by Annika and Sina here. But as Eric said, we didn't want to offend you. <laughs> At least you, you, you attack and send us out from the coast. So in order to accommodate all of you, but also because we know 
that Eddie Fiumondi is a very is, is, is the king of comedy, the president of comedy in Africa. You know when he is president, it means he's president both for the male and the female. So really thank you Eric also for joining us this evening and for promoting this festival. I will try to make my remarks very brief. We have been promoting partnership between Uganda and the Kenya Post since 2022. We started with the first conference here in Mombasa at Raidin. Last year in 23, we were in Kwale at Dian Reef. This year in November, we are going to Uganda for the third conference. From 10th, we shall be in, in Uganda. And next year in 25, we shall be in Kirifi. Taita Taveta is also lining up to host us, maybe in 2026. So really, the partnership that we have built is because of we want to promote complementarity between the products that are here at the Kenya Coast and those in Uganda. Here at the Kenya Coast, we all know the beautiful beaches we have. We have the historical sites like Fort Jesus where we are. We have uh, Vasco da Gamapila in Marindi. But for us in Uganda, we don't have such beautiful beaches that you do, like you do here. And as, as Mori said earlier, we also have beaches that they are really, uh, as you go to Entebbe Airport, you, you will meet about three beaches there. Does anyone dispute that? <laughs> so we have a number of beaches, three of them towards the Entebbe Airport. I think you, all those who have traveled to Entebbe, you have seen those beaches, very beautiful, and how they compare with those here at the Kenya coast. So we have those beaches. We, so we don't have the beaches that you have here. We have the mountain gorillas that you don't have here. We have the chimpanzees that you don't have here. Yeah. We have the adventure tourism, uh, which you have seen here, on River Nile, the water rafting. We have a very unique Kampara tour, which includes the Matas Shrine in Namgongo, the Kabakas Palace in Mengo, the Kampara Nightlife, which is a unique product. All of you have agreed that Kampala is the capital city of nightlife in this region. Waziri here has a son studying in Uganda. And uh, the son whispered to me without the dad hearing that he really enjoys the Kampala nightlife. <laughs> <laughs> and Waziri, you haven't had that. I also whispered to him to cement the bond between Uganda and Kenya by marrying from Uganda <laughs> and he also promised that he, he he's already promoting that partnership between Uganda and the Kenya Post. And again and again was it you haven't had that. <laughs> so the complementarity that you are promoting is for these products. So that you people at the Kenya coast that don't have the mountain gorillas, the chimpanzees, and all these products, you travel to Uganda to experience them. Much the same way as we do come to the Kenya coast to experience the beaches and all these the historical uh, sites that you have. And I'm seeing in this audience a number of people that have been uh, to Uganda, whom we have taken to Uganda to, to help in promoting these products at the Kenya Post. I have my sister there, Monica, who has variously been to Uganda, the designer here, with whom we were in Uganda last November. I've seen Mr. Guyo Abraham, whom we took in 2022, and I think a number of others here. So we want these tourism stakeholders at the Kenya Post to experience these products so that when they are selling them, they are saying something that they know, that they have seen and they have experienced. And we have also been bringing in Ugandans here to experience the Kenya coast. And last year we brought in a plane full, an airbus of about 200 Ugandans. 
and they went around all the Kenya coast experiencing these products. And now, that's why part of the reason that we are seeing the numbers growing further. In 2023, 22, the Kenyans that visited Uganda, according to official records, I must emphasize, were about 350. That was 2022. Last year, in 23, there were about 500,000. So you can see an increase of over about 150 within one year. Last 22 Ugandans that visited Kenya were about 135. Last year there were 200,000. So you can see the numbers are growing. I'm not attributing this only to our efforts, but what I know is that we are contributing to growing the numbers. And one other product that we have added, and this is what we are doing this morning in Vikingo, is to add, is to add, Taitatabeta, can you please listen? I know you are enjoying the Ugandan cuisine. So we have introduced golf tourism to, our, to, to the products we are promoting. And why have we added golf tourism? I have been saying that these golfers have got reasonable disposable income. Do we have any golfer here? Hey, you mean all of you people don't have disposable income? <laughs> so that's we have brought on board the golfers because we want to promote golf tourism, we have started with golf because these people have a lot of money to spend. So we have the inaugural Kilifi Uganda Golf Tournament today in Vipingo. Later this year we are going to have the return match in November. And these golf tournaments will also become a permanent future of our uh, golf, I mean of our tourism conferences. They will be preceding the, the golf I mean the, the tourism conferences. So in November we expect an even bigger and better organized uh, golf tournament. So we very much treasure the partnership that we have built with tourism stakeholders at the Kenya Post. We value your support. We value the support of the tourism stakeholders. With this partnership, and complementarity that we are promoting, we are sure we are going to grow the numbers. We keep saying that it's not competition because beaches cannot compete with mountain gorillas, but they can very well complement each other. And uh, maybe with the climate change, the beaches at the Kenya coast might shift to Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> So, but even, even when they shift to Uganda, we shall welcome you to Uganda, because we have already built a strong partnership. <laughs> However, even with the evolution, it might take a, many more years for the many monkeys that I see in the Kenya here, the Kenya coast in Inyali and wherever, to become mountain gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> it will take a bit of time. For these monkeys to become mountain gorillas. So let's continue with this partnership. Let's continue promoting one another. This helps us to grow regional tourism. Regional tourism helps us to get more numbers. It helps us to do away with seasonality, to have low and high seasons. Because for us in the region and Africa, we don't wait for summer or winter to travel. We travel the whole year around. But also, they will help us deal with these travel advisors that we always get from those markets which we treasure, but which at the slightest provocation, we say that don't travel to Uganda because there is a dollar. Don't travel to Kenya because there is a, an isolated incident somewhere. So really, we need to build this partnership and uh, I'm sure that when we continue with this partnership, we shall continue to grow the tourism, the, the tourism industry. We shall continue to provide many jobs because the value chain of tourism 
cuts across all the sectors of the economy, but at the end of the day, we shall get more money into our treasuries, we shall get more money into our private companies, and even the tourists that come to visit us will get a bigger menu and they will stay longer in our region and again this will lead to a tourism development. So with those few remarks, it is now my honor to invite Honorable Muhammad Osman who is representing His Excellency Nasir Abdul Fad, the governor of 001 who has been our very strong supporter uh, over the years to come and make these remarks. Thank you very much. I know I'm standing between you and sleep, so I think there's no time to make speeches. First, uh, maybe to introduce my chairman of uh, Chair of Commerce, Jamal Abud. Can you please come and say hi to them? I'm Jambo. Good evening. Good evening. Sana Mombasa for those who are coming all the way from Uganda. Thank you very much. You can see me on making me. Hi. Santeni na karibuni tena. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, all professors of staff, we also in the house, we have been accompanied by Chief Advisor of Governor, uh, Mahmoud Noor. Please, can you wait for the people? Uh, and please, today, it is his birthday. So, we need to, to sing for him his birthday. Happy birthday, Meta. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocols of South, I think uh, Your Excellency, you've not disappointed. You promised us that you'll bring Uganda to Mombasa County 001. And you've done exactly that one. Not to mention the authentic uh, Uganda cuisine. This is something that we'll not forget as Mombasa County 001. So on behalf of our Governor, Professor Charles Nassil, I welcome you all to Mombasa County 001. Kasimi, please remain here 10 days. We'll take care of you. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, there is a CC for Trade and Trust in Mombasa. Uh, I think uh, we have a partner with our counterpart to Uganda. This is something that we started uh, three, four years ago. And it's something that uh, uh, yesterday we marked uh, what we call, we marked uh, Mombasa Tourism Council. Yesterday is the day that we, maybe the members of Mombasa Tourism Council, can you please stand up? Stand up. Members of Tourism Council who are here. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yesterday we marked a milestone in uh, Mombasa Tourism uh, journey and uh, we integrated what we call Mombasa Tourism Council. This is a council that now from today on also will be spearheading and connecting all activities of Mombasa uh, Tourism. So we are looking forward to, to partner with our counterpart uh, Mombasa, uh, Uganda, in terms of cultural exchange, and we introduce also sport tourism, cruise tourism, all these things that uh, through the NTC, which will be our vehicle to market and uh, product Mombasa, we're looking forward to other partners. And as you remember, Uganda has been our second source market from USA with around 250,000. This is something that we don't take it for light, and this is a partnership that we cherish. So in those three words, I wish you all the best, and welcome to County 001. Thank you. Uh, the ambassador and everybody present, and I want to say all protocols are observed. Good evening. I have only two minutes. My name is Get Chuve, the CEC in charge of trade, tourism, cooperative development, and industrialization to Itachavet account. Thank you. I want to say two things. First, I thank you so much, Ambassador, for inviting us here. When people hear the cost, they forget Itachavet County. They just think the cost is beaches. But Itachavet County is one of the county in coast region. We don't have beach, but we have the hills. We only have beautiful hills. We are known for the two largest national parks, Savo East National Park, Savo West National Park. We have the fresh water lakes, 
Greater Lake Chala, Lake Jupe. We have indigenous forest, Mwambiro forest, Nangao forest. We have the only bird that is found in the whole uh, uh, world. It's called Taita Palace. You can only find that bird in Taita Tabita County. And we are known for battlefield tourism. The first shot that was done in, Taita, in East Africa chapter of World War I was shot in Taita Tabeta County. And we have so many things that we can offer the world. We are known as the hidden treasure, but now we don't want to hide anymore. So we want to invite everybody in Taita Tabeta County and we take the challenge ambassador. We will host you. You said we need 200 beds. I remember, I take that challenge. We'll host 200 Ugandans in Taita Tabeta County. We are going to have a meeting with the stakeholders, the two operators, the hotel industry, and they assured me we have space for all of you Uganda to come to Taita Tabeta County. I want to finish by, Kansime, we love you so much. So, yeah, we have a lot. Taita Tabeta County is one, the county with very few of us. We are very few, we are less than 500,000. Our land is very big, but 62% of our land is taken by the National Park. 14% is taken by the ranches, and only 8% is us. So we are very few, but we are rich in culture. You have seen our Uruasi, and we love you. One of the things that I have to remember with Kansime is, we have CBC in Kenya, where parents are supposed to teach their school children homework. Most parents do not understand. I remember what you said. You, you are shouting to the teachers. Why are they telling you to help them with their work with their children? Yes, we also don't know. Thank you so much. And we love you. We love Uganda. And thank you for this opportunity. I'm here to represent my governor, Governor Andrew Mwadime Wakuja, Taita Tabeta County. Karibuni sana na mungu wa